Hey everyone, this is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to Edureka's YouTube channel. So this session is all about MVC interview questions. So in this video, I have collected the most frequently asked questions which are collected after consulting with top industry experts in the field of design patterns, ASP.NET and Spring Framework. If you wish to brush up with the MVC basics, which I recommend you to do before going ahead with the interview questions, I suggest you to take a look at the videos on MVC tutorial in our YouTube playlist. So in case you come across some other questions during your interviews or you have some queries that might be helpful for others as well. So do share them in the comment section and we will help you with the solution. So well, let's have a look at the agenda for the session. So in this video, I will be covering the top 40 questions which comprise of the basic interview questions for beginners and intermediate interview questions for mid-level experienced people and advanced interview questions for experienced professional as well. So it is being divided into three different sections that is basic for beginner level intermediate interview questions and advanced level MVC interview questions as well. So now let's begin with the very first question for beginners. So the first question on the list is what is MVC? MVC is an abbreviation for model view and controller. The MVC architectural pattern separates an application into three components that is model view and controller. In this pattern, the model represents the shape of the data and business logic. It maintains and preserves the data of the application and model objects retrieve and store the model state in a database. Now talking about the view, it is basically and technically a user interface. The view segments displays the data using model to the user and also enables them to modify the data. Now talking about the last component that is the controller, it is the part which handles the user request. So this is all about the model view and controller and how these functions. The next question on the list is, Mention what does model view and controller represents in an MVC application Talking about the model it represents the application data domain as I have already mentioned before It is the application business logic and is contained within the model and is responsible for maintaining the data and View represents a user interface with which the end users communicate in short all the user interface logic is contained within the view and now talking about the controller, it answers to the user's actions. Based on the user actions, the respective controller responds within the model and choose a view to render that display the user interface. The user input logic is contained within the controller. So these are the functionalities of model view and controller and you can see in this picture. The next question that we have on the list is, List out a few different return types of a controller action method. As like every other component has its own return type, even controller action also has its return types. So I'm going to name a few of them. First, view result. Next, JavaScript result, redirect result, JSON result, and content result. So these are the different return types of a controller action method. Now let's move ahead and take a look at the next question. The next question that we have is what are the advantages of MVC? MVC have a wide range of advantages. Now let me name a few of the advantages and tell you how these actually benefit the model view controller pattern. The first one is multiple view support. Because of the separation of the model from the view, the user interface can display multiple views of the same data and at the same time. Next, change in accommodation. User interfaces tend to change more frequently than business rules. The next advantage is SOC, that is separation of concerns. Separation of concerns is one of the core advantages of ASP.NET MVC. And the MVC framework provides a clean separation of user interface, business logic, model, or data. Next, more control. This again comes in respect to ASP.NET MVC framework and that provides more control over HTML, JavaScript and CSS than the traditional web forms. Next is testability. The framework provides better testability of the web application and good support for the test driven development too. The next one is lightweight. 
MVC framework doesn't use view state and that reduces the bandwidth of the request to an extent. So these are the various advantages of MVC and that's the reason MVC is one of the most popular pattern that is widely being used in case of JavaScript, ASP.NET and Spring as well. Next question is explain the role of components at as presentation, abstraction and control in MVC. So presentation is basically the usual representation of a specific abstraction within the application. Talking about the abstraction, it is the business domain functionality within the application. And control is the component that keeps the consistency between the abstraction within the system and the presentation to the user. It is also used to communicate with other controls within the system. Next question is how to maintain session in MVC. So it is very simple because session can be maintained in MVC by three ways that is stem data view data and view back. So moving further in the session you will also understand what is view data what is view back and what is the difference between them and what is stem data as well. Next is what is MVC application lifecycle. So now let me tell you what it is. So any web application has two main execution steps first understanding the request. And next, depending on the type of the request, you have to send out an appropriate response. And MVC application lifecycle has two main phases. First, creating the request object, and second, sending the response to the browser. So if you have to create the object that is a request object, it basically includes four main steps. First, you have to fill the root, then fetch the root, then you have to create the request context and then the controller instance will be created. After this you have to send the response back. Very simple. The next question is what does the MVC pattern define with the three logical layers? The MVC model web applications with three different layers. That is the business layer which is a model logic, the display layer which is the view logic and the input control which implies the controller logic. So the model is a part of the application which only handles the logic for the application data. Regularly the model object retrieves the data from a database and the view is a part of the application which takes care of the display of the data. Most often the views are created from the model data although there are other more complicated methods of creating views and the controller as the name implies is a part of the application that handles the user interaction. So these are the three different logical layers that MVC model defines web applications. Talking about the next question it is what is Spring MVC? It is a Java framework which is used to build the web applications and that also follows model view controller design pattern. Not just that it also implements all the basic features of the core Spring framework like inversion of control dependency injection etc. Spring MVC provides a dignified solution to use MVC in the Spring framework with the help of a dispatcher servlet. In this case, dispatcher servlet is a class that receives the incoming request and maps it to the right resource such as controller, model, and views. So that is all about what is Spring MVC. Next question is what is ASP.NET MVC? This is also a web application framework. It is lightweight and highly testable framework. MVC separates an application into three components again that is model view and controller. It's just that MVC is being used in different ways for Spring and ASP.NET. Next question is what is MVC routing? So this comes under ASP.NET only and the URLs in the ASP.NET MVC are mapped to the action methods and controller instead of physical files in the system. In order to accurately map the action methods and the controllers to URLs, the routing engine forms the appropriate routes. Using this, the controller can handle the specific request. So first, the request is being sent to the routing engines and then across the routes, it is sent to the controller where the controller can handle the specific request. I hope you got this. Next, what are the filters? Sometimes what happens we want to execute some logic either before the execution of the action method or after the execution. 
In such kind of scenarios, we can use action filters. And filters define the logic which is executed before or after the execution of the action method. Action filters are attributes which we can apply to the action methods. So we have some types of filters. For example, you have authorization filters that implements I authorization filter and you have action filter, you have result and exception filter as well. And these are being used for separate implementations for action for I result for I exception, etc. Next, what is a partial view in MVC? A partial view is a chunk of HTML that can be safely inserted into an existing DOM. Most commonly, partial views are used to componentize razor views and make them easier to build and update. It can also be returned directly from controller methods. In this case, the browser still receives the text or HTML content, but not necessarily HTML content that makes up an entire page. As a result, if the URLs that returns a partial view is directly invoked from an address bar of a browser, an incomplete page may be displayed. This may be something like a page that misses title, script, and style sheets. Next question is Can you explain the page life cycle of MVC? Basically, a page life cycle involves five different stages. First one is app initialization. After that you have to go with the routing after routing is done. You have to instantiate and execute the controller and once you instantiate the controller you have to locate and invoke the controller action and then instantiate and you have to render the view. So these are the various steps that is involved starting from the app initialization to rendering the view in page lifecycle of MVC. Next question is what is the use of view model in MVC? View model is a plain class with properties which is used to bind it to a strongly typed view. It can have the validation rules that is defined for its properties using the data annotation. So this is the main use of view model in MVC. So these are some of the questions for beginners. Now I will move further and tell you some of the intermediate level interview questions. The next question on the list is what is database first approach in MVC using the entity framework? Database first approach is an alternative or substitutes to the code first and model first approaches to the data entity model. The entity data model creates model codes from the database in the project and that class behaves as a link between the database and controller. So the approaches that is being used to connect to a database are database first, model first and code first. Next, what do you mean by MVC scaffolding? Scaffolding is a code generation framework for ASP.NET Web applications. Visual Studio includes pre installed code generators for MVC and Web API projects. You can add scaffolding to your projects when you want to quickly add the code that interacts with the data models. Using scaffolding, it will reduce the amount of time that is used to develop the standard data operations in your project. It consists of a page templates entity page templates field page templates and filter templates as well. These templates are called scaffold templates and they allow you to quickly build a functional data driven website. The next question is explain the concept of razor in ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET MVC has always supported the concept of view engines, which are the pluggable modules that implement different template syntax options. The default view engine for ASP.NET MVC uses the same .aspx and .aspcx master file templates as ASP.NET web forms. Other popular ASP.NET MVC view engines are Spart and NHAML. And Razor is a new engine which was introduced by MVC version 3. Next question is explain the concept of default root in MVC. The default ASP.NET MVC project templates add a generic root that uses this URL convention to break the URL for a given request into three name segments that is controller, action, and ID. And you have to write it in this pattern. And this root pattern is registered via a call to the MapReduce extension method of root collection. 
The next question on the list is what is get and post action types? Get is used to request data from a specified resource. With all the get request, we can pass the URL which is compulsory. However, it can take up the following overloads. Next, post action type. The post is used to submit the data to be processed to a specific resource. With all the post request, we can pass the URL and the data which is essential. However, it can also take up many overloads as well. Next, how does view data differ from view bag in MVC? So basically view data is used to pass the data from a controller to a view and view bag is also used to pass the data from a controller back to the respective view. Next view data is available for the current request only view bag is also available for the current request. Next point view data requires type casting for complex data type and checks for null values to avoid the error. But view bag on the other hand doesn't require typecasting for the complex data type. Next, if the redirection occurs, then it value becomes null in case of view data. Same goes with view bag as well. If the redirection occurs, then even the value becomes null. So these are some of the similarities and the differences between view data and view bag in model view controller. Next question is mention the benefits of area in MVC. It's easy for unit testing. It is easy to integrate with other areas that is created by another. It allows us to organize model view and controller into separate functional sections of the application such as administration, billing, customer support and many more. So these are some of the benefits of area in MVC. Next question is which filters are executed in the end. So basically in the end exception filters are executed. Why because first you have to authorize a request so authorization filter will be executed first and then the action filter and then you have to implement the result filter and finally the exception filter. So if there are any exceptions or errors then it will be handled and that is the reason it is executed in the end. Next what are the two ways of adding constraints to a root? The two methods of adding a constraint to a root is by using regular expression and by using an object that implements I root constraint interface. The next question on the list is how to implement validation in MVC. We can easily implement validation in MVC by using the validators that are defined in the system component model data annotations namespace. So there are different types of validators like required data type range and string length. So mention the two instances where routing is not implemented or required. The two instances where routing is not required or implemented are when a physical file is found that matches the URL pattern and when a routing is disabled for a URL pattern. So these are the two instances where routing is not required. So how can you implement Ajax in MVC? So basically it can be implemented in two ways by using Ajax libraries and by using jQuery. If you wish to know what is jQuery you can check out the jQuery tutorial in our YouTube playlist. Next what is the use of keep and peek in temp data? Once temp data is read in the current request it is not available in the subsequent request. If we want temp data to be read and also available in the subsequent request then after reading we need to call the keep method. So you can see in the below code. So first what I'm doing I'm using tem data and invoking my data. So once I read this in the current request it is not available for the next subsequent request. So if I want to keep it I should use the keep method and then write it in this format. And the more shortcut way of achieving the same is by using peak. This functions helps to read as well as advises MVC to maintain temp data for the subsequent request. So I have created an object for string and just using peak and sending it to string. So this is how I can use it. Next question is what is web API? HTTP is the most commonly used protocol. Since many years the browser was the most preferred client by which we consume data exposed over HTTP. But as years passed by client variety started spreading out. 
we have demanded to consume data on HTTP from clients like mobile, JavaScript, Windows application, etc. For satisfying the broad range of clients, REST was the proposed approach. Web API is a technology by which you can expose the data over HTTP following REST principles. Next, how can we detect that an MVC controller is called by a GET or POST? To detect if a call on the controller is a GET action or a POST action, we can use the request.http method property as shown in this code. So, first, there's a method called action result sum action. Then, in if condition, I'm using request.http is equal to POST. If this is the case, then it will return the view of some page, that is, whatever the action is. Else it will return the view or the display of some other page. By this, you can understand whether the request is a GET or a POST. Now let's move further and look at some of the advanced MVC interview questions. The first question in advanced section is What are the main Razor syntax rules? So the first point is Razor code blocks are enclosed in add symbol and followed by the flower braces. And the inline expressions, that is, the variables and functions, also should start with add symbol. And the code statement should end with a semicolon. Variables are declared with the var keyword and strings are enclosed with quotation marks. C sharp code is case sensitive and C sharp file extension should have .cshtml. So these are some of the major syntax rules for Razor. Next, how do you implement forms authentication in MVC? Authentication is giving access to the user for a specific service by verifying his or her identity by using his or her credentials like username, password or email and password. It assures that the correct user is authenticated or logged in for a specific service and the right service has been provided to the specific user based on their role. Next, what do you mean by render body and render page in MVC? Render body is like content placeholder in web forms. This will exist in layout page and it will render the child pages or views. Layout page will have only one render body method. And render page also exists in layout page and multiple render page can be used or can be present in the layout pages. So what are non action methods in MVC? In MVC, all the public methods have been treated as actions. So if you are creating a method and do not wish to use it as an action method, then the method has to be decorated with a non action attribute. So here you have a method called test method and you can write any method logic and if you don't want to use the action method, then you have to use the non action as shown here. Very simple, right? Next, how to perform exception handling in MVC. In the controller, you can override the on exception event and set the result to the view name which you want to invoke when an error occurs. So you can see in this code, that we have set the result to a view that is named as error. Okay, and we have also set the exception so that it can be displayed inside the view. So there's a class called home controller and I'm overriding the on exception with the filter context that is exception context and then defining the exception ex is equal to filter context dot exception and then I'm renaming the handled exception of filter context to true then Inside, I'm naming the view to error. And if there is any view data, then it will display. And if there is any error in the result, then it will be displayed as error. So, this is how you need to perform exception handling in MVC. So, which is a better fit, Razor or ASPX? As for the Microsoft, Razor is more preferred because it is lightweight and has simple syntaxes. That is the reason Razor is more preferred over ASPX. Next, what is a code blocks in MVC? Unlike code expressions that are evaluated and sent to the response, it is the blocks of code that are executed. And this is useful for declaring variables which we may require to be used in a later purpose. This is how a code blocks can be written using add symbol and followed by a flower brace. 
and I have declared a variable for integer and string and then again close the flower brace. So this is nothing but a code block in a view. Next, why use HTML.partial in MVC? This method is used to render the specified partial view as an HTML string. This method does not depend on any action methods. So we can use it like first add symbol HTML.partial and inside you can pass test partial view. Next question is what is a glimpse? Glimpse is a NuGet packages which help in finding performance, debugging, and diagnostic information. It can also help you get the information about the timelines, model bindings, routes, environment, etc. Now the last question is how to navigate from one view to an another using a hyperlink. By using the action link method, you can navigate. So take a look at the code which will help you create a simple URL which helps to navigate the home controller and invoke the go to home action. So this is a code syntax where I have used HTML dot action link the home controller and the navigation page that is the go to home and followed by this. So this is how you can navigate from one view to another using a hyperlink. With this we come to an end of this video on MVC interview questions. I hoped it helped in adding up your knowledge and I wish you all the best for your interview. If you have any queries you can comment in the comment section below and we will reply back to you at the earliest. Thank you for attending this session. Have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.